Yeah, first I'm going to say I'm going to agree with Michelle. I'm very optimistic that we can and will get a national privacy law done because I think consumers want it, I think companies want it, and I think uh, privacy enforcement is already happening as we heard from Commissioner Wilson. So we're not starting from scratch here. And I think one point uh, that comes out in Jim's presentation, you know, we can focus on the differences, but there also is a lot of overlap and consistency in the core concepts and the core consumer protections that apply in Europe in the GDPR uh, in some of the state laws we're seeing. So I think a global company like AT&T, what I hear from our business is, you know, we, um, you know we, we support strong privacy protections, but we need to know what we're, we're going to build and tell us what to do, give us more certainty so we can operate and know what we're, what we're in for. And I think consumers ultimately want the same thing. If we're going to provide uh, true consumer uh, trust and a feeling of security online and in, you know, in the offline world these days, you know, we need to establish that framework of strong privacy protections that applies to all of their data, no matter who's collecting it and how they're using it. And I think, you know, sometimes we uh, don't think about the context of the GDPR. The Europe had a directive before that, right? So this was, from their perspective, what they found is that uh, the variation and the inconsistencies that we're creating under a directive, you know, were not keeping pace with uh, where they wanted to be. And so, you know, I think w what they say is having a standardized actual regulation across the EU is good for business, it gives them that certainty, but it also is good for consumers. So I think there's a lot to build on for uh, US law here, and I, I see a lot of energy and momentum behind it. Um, I think part of it is just wading through all the other issues in DC right now to get some focus on privacy.